Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a ton of things to cover, but I'm currently working on quite a few things right now, so I thought I'd do a talking head video. Either way, today EVGA has officially quit the GPU business. We see multiple RTX 4000 cards, Nvidia's announcement, first 13,900K review, and AMD's RX 7000 goes 4 GHz. But first, with all these new releases coming out, make sure you stay up to date by joining Meld Alerts. It's completely free, and basically, when major PC hardware is released, I'll send you a notification. Plus, I'll tell you when you can get great deals so you can actually get it at a great price. I may even send some build suggestions from time to time. With that said, let me know what releases you're most excited about by dropping a comment below. And don't worry, I'm not going to flood your inbox. Some weeks you won't get anything, and others you might get a few. To sign up, just visit meldalerts.com and fill out the form. It's just your email. Once again, that's meldalerts.com. Okay, it's news time, and you've probably already heard the news. Unfortunately, it was dropped right as I post my last video, but if you haven't, EVGA has officially ceased their GPU business. And this is right on the cusp of Nvidia releasing their RTX 4000 cards. And I'll actually get to that in just a second. Regardless, this is obviously a huge deal. As you can see right here, EVGA CEO stated, EVGA has terminated its relationship with Nvidia. Now, really quickly, for those who don't know, EVGA has been a board partner with Nvidia since I believe 2000. So, we're talking 22 years of business, and just like that, seemingly out of nowhere, they're stopping it. And we do at least have some hints and a bit of an idea as to why. You can see EVGA will no longer be manufacturing video cards of any type, citing a souring relationship with Nvidia as the cause. And this is sort of where we get into the why. You can see right here uh, in Gamers Nexus video, EVGA was actually quoted as saying, it's about respect. And when we go over here to an article by John Petty Research, we see this. They state, slowly over time, the relationship between EVGA and NVIDIA changed from what EVGA considered a true partnership to customer-seller arrangement whereby EVGA was no longer consulted on new product announcements and briefings, not featured at events, and not informed of price changes. On September 7th, and this is actually something I discussed in one of my videos right around this time, NVIDIA offered via Best Buy an RTX 3090 Ti for $1,099.99, undercutting EVGA and other partners that were offering their products at $1,399.99. Apparently, there was no warning of the price cut, and it left the partners with little choice but to sell their inventory at below cost to meet NVIDIA's price. Basically, out of the blue, NVIDIA decided to cut their prices drastically without telling any of the AIB partners. Another reason that things got pretty sour pretty fast looks to be margins. As you can see here, early 2000s, sure, profit margins were still up between NVIDIA and AIB partners. Comparatively, the margins NVIDIA gets versus AIBs, but they're fairly close. Yet, you can see up towards 2010, those start shifting drastically. AIB partners' gross profits go down, while NVIDIA's go up, and then 2015, they go up even more, and as of right now, we're talking massive profits for NVIDIA, yet way less for AIB partners. In fact, things are probably even worse than you think. When we look over here, we can see in an article in Yahoo Finance, they're quoting Gamers Nexus. Apparently, the CEO stated that their graphics cards are 80% of the company's business, which is pretty wild to all of a sudden cut ties with basically the market that you make 80% of your business with. But this right here is a pretty decent reason why. So 80% of their business is GPUs, yet they make 300% more of a margin on power supplies. Basically, while a ton of their business is GPUs, they're not making much of anything off of them. And when we go back to this John Petty Research article, we see they are unusual compared to their peer companies because they actually maintain a large engineering staff and designs for their PCBs and cooling systems, as well as provide software for monitoring, 24-7 premium customer service, 48-hour RMA return policy, just quite a bit of things that really make a ton of gamers 
like EVGA. But with dwindling profit margins, they likely don't see the point in doing it anymore. And for those who might say, ooh, this is a great opportunity for AMD or Intel, unfortunately, I really wouldn't get that excited. And that's because they also said they will not be exploring relationships with AMD or Intel at this time, and the company will be downsizing imminently as it exits the video card market. So this doesn't just seem like, oh, we're done with Nvidia, so now we're gonna check out the competition. No, this is, we are done with GPUs, period. Now, they did say at this time, so maybe that could change, but at least for now, it really does not sound like they're gonna be switching to AMD or offering any other GPUs, period. And next up for today, Lenovo actually shared their GPUs for the upcoming RTX 4000 cards. And as you can see right here, they are massive. They're being compared to the Legion Y9000X laptop, and because we know exactly how big that is, we can see just how big these are. Apparently, while the Y9000X is 35.8 centimeters wide, these GPUs are incredibly similar at 35.6, meaning we're talking their upcoming GPUs are very similar to the width of their laptops. So these are massive GPUs, much bigger than last generations. You can actually see down here, they're much thicker, most likely around seven nanometers. And basically this more or less shows once again that the 4000 series is likely gonna consume a lot of power and need a ton of cooling. You can see it right here. This was actually leaked not too long ago, but the same GPU. Then we also have the cooler design inside, all these heat pipes, just flat huge in general. Then we have some images of an upcoming Galax GPU. We aren't 100% sure that this is the 4000 series, but it almost certainly is, or at the very least, we don't know if it's you know a 4090, 4090 Ti, 4080, but it also is clearly massive and it has four fans. You have three right here, and then a fourth fan here. And with that, we have NVIDIA's Keynote. For those who don't know, they are gonna be announcing their GPUs tomorrow, and make sure to subscribe to GamerMeld if you're interested in finding out about those when they are announced. But they actually have a bit of a teaser right here already, and it gives quite a bit of things. You can see for one, we have user 40, who responded and said how much faster. So the first hint, 40. Obviously that confirms this is the 4000 series, which we more or less knew that at this point, but this makes it definitive. Another thing that's pretty interesting is that they actually said, uh, they had a little note down here that says, is it TI or TI? If you followed this industry, you know that there's kind of a debate, is it TI or is it pronounced TI? You know, 3090 TI, 3090 TI. Some of the head execs at NVIDIA have actually said both ways. So it is pretty funny. I understand that the TI is supposed to be the element for titanium. So, you know, you have some people saying, well, it should be TI, it shouldn't be TI. But this is proof that even NVIDIA themselves do get the joke. They do understand that most people call it TI. So a little bit of a funny thing right there. Either way, the GPUs are coming and they're coming soon. And next up for today, we have what should be the first real review of Intel's upcoming 13,900K. This review was originally done by Billy Billy. Now, unfortunately, that has since been taken down, but as usual, that doesn't mean it's fake or anything like that. In fact, it more or less, if you ask me, makes it more plausible and more likely that it is in fact true. Either way, we have this story with video cards and it's pretty interesting. First up, we have some Cinebench benchmarks and you can see that they actually did single threaded right here with the performance core as well as the E core. And what's pretty interesting is that the performance core, so single core performance core got an uplift of 13%, while the efficient cores increased by 14%. Now, what's interesting about the E cores getting an increase is that they're the same architecture, Gracemont. But the reason for the increase in performance is a much higher frequency increase 
as well as more L3 cache. So it's not necessarily an IPC increase, it's mostly due to higher core clocks. Either way, of course, the big news here is going to be multi-core performance, and it's here where things get pretty interesting. The 13,900K can break 40,000 points, we can see here 40,662 in Cinebench 23, which is a whopping 47% increase over the 12,900K. With that said, that's using the unlimited power setting, which should have some pretty wild power draw. So you'll definitely have to have a really good cooler to be able to do this, and it's gonna suck a ton of power. Next, we have actually a slew of benchmarks where we see we're looking at the unlimited 13,900K is on average, I do believe this is on average, yes it is, average right here, 41.78% faster than the 12,900K. So the 13,900K is a pretty serious contender, but it doesn't stop there. We also see that it brings 10% higher frame rates than the 12,900K in CPU pound games. We can see here CSGO, Ashes of the Singularity, but it also improves frame times from the lowest 0.1% frames. Basically, Intel's upcoming 13,900K is looking pretty impressive, but obviously we'll have to see how it compares to AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPU. And speaking of AMD, we have a pretty interesting leak from Leaker HXL. According to him, we can see here, this is when AMD showed off the RX 7000 uh, GPU design, just, you know, the top half of it, quickly gave us a little tease on it. Well, HXL states that we're looking at this bad boy getting almost 4 gigahertz. Seriously impressive, if true, obviously we'll have to wait and see. We don't have any real concrete time when we can expect these GPUs to be released, but at least for now, that is really interesting and it does not stop there. AMD actually just shared a new blog post and in it, they say something fairly interesting on their RDNA 3 GPUs. So we're talking RX 7000. As you can see right here, the blog is titled Advancing Performance Per Watt to Benefit Gamers. This is likely released specifically because the RTX 4000 series is gonna be announced, you know, like I said, tomorrow. So it makes perfect sense. RTX 4000 is rumored to be a power hog and they're saying, hey, we have great performance per watt. Well, they actually reference their RDNA 3 GPUs. They say here, looking ahead, we're continuing our push for more efficient gaming with AMD's RDNA 3 architecture. As the first graphics, blah, 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 delivers an estimate over 50% performance better per watt than the RDNA 2 architecture. Better performance per watt than AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. They then go on to say, contributing to this energy conscious design, AMD RDNA 3 redefines the RDNA 2 adaptive power management technology to set workload specific operation points, ensuring each component of the GPU uses only the power it requires for optimal performance. The new architecture also introduced a new generation of AMD's Infinity Cache, projected to offer even higher density, lower power caches to reduce the power needs of graphics memory, helping to cement RDNA 3 and Radeon graphics as a true leader in efficiency. Basically, that's a long-winded way of saying, hey, when NVIDIA announces these 4000 series tomorrow, don't get too excited. We've got some really cool stuff coming as well. And of course, time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's upcoming GPUs or are you more pumped for the RTX 4000 series? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.